Hey everybody and welcome back. Right, well, this is going to be not quite the very last episode for the C15 because of waiting for the tank. But um, you'll see all the bits that I mentioned last week and you'll see us try to start. So it's not much to say. Um, we're going to get on pretty quickly. The only the only real thing worth mentioning is we went past 8,000 subscribers and I mentioned it before but I really am amazed at that. I honestly never thought there'd be that many people that would enjoy the videos. So thanks very much for that, for the sort of confidence it shows. Thanks very much for all the comments, um, particularly the encouraging ones of course. And thanks also for all the comments that have taught me things because you know we've covered a lot of bikes and you know I'm not a bike mechanic or should I say I haven't had a life as a bike mechanic so really I've only ever worked on the bikes that I personally had so we worked on bikes that I didn't know and those of you who did know them have given me a lot of really good information for which I thank you very much um, we'll do our normal thing I'll go through uh, comments at the end what I've done actually the last couple of weeks is leave that until sort of Saturday morning and just do that very last bit and then I've got a whole week's worth of comments to look at. So, uh, oh, the only other thing I'll mention is this video has got a little bit of machine in it. And um, when I put the video together, I have no idea what I was thinking about when I did the machining, but I mentioned a couple of measurements and the maths involved is just completely out but the pieces came out the right size so I must have just misspoken one of the measurements whatever enjoy the video and um, as I've noticed they say sometimes I'll see you on the other side here's another little finishing off job I'm doing um, you remember there's a star going on there I think a couple of people mentioned that they had a black background and it made the star look nice and the picture I've got, the C15T, has that disc in black and then the silver star on. So I've just masked it up and I'll give it a couple of coats of black and then we can put the silver star on there. Right now, put the chain case cover on with a new gasket. I found a couple of Allens, but the rest of the old ones. That actually is a bolt. It's not threaded on the other side and I suppose I should have shown you. It's got a little cutaway. It's basically the pressure relief. Alright, so first thing we're going to put on is this. So we're all nicely greased up. That threads into there. paint in there I suppose. Oops. Now I've just found out that I don't have That you set, you should be able to tighten that right up, or again, it might be just a little pin. But there's a, a lock nut goes on the back. Well, actually, you wouldn't get a lock nut on there. Well, you might have to put the lock nut on first. We'll look at that shortly. Now, I've got this, and I've just discovered that I don't have one of those. I can make the uh, nerd thing to go on the end. Now where am I? What was I going to say? Oh yeah, so I still have to get a little spring to go from there to here. And normally they have a little clamp thing on, which I didn't like. I never have liked. So I made up a little alloy one with a grub screw and I think to put the spring on. So that goes on there. It's like an hour grub screw off. I've smidgen 
There we go. So that'll go on there. Then we have, oh come on, I just had hold of you. There it is. Trunnion for there. So we'll put that in. That in there. And that's going to go on there. Like so. That in. And a split pin in the back. Hey! Come on now, just stay in there. Don't mess me about. You've messed me about enough on this job. Washer on the back. And a little split pin thing. I suppose I could have put this on before I actually put the brake lever on. But there. So that's that in there. And this is the adjuster. I don't know if you remember us doing that. That goes in there. So I can screw that in in a minute. All right. That all needs tightening up. So then this goes on. Oh, this must go on first. <laughs> yes, it does. Bugger. See, the reason I'm using this is because it's only got two flats on it. So you can't really get hold of it. It started snowing. And it is going to snow from now until 7 o'clock on Tuesday evening. Apparently New York, the actual New York City is getting it. Is that the right one? I thought I'd put, uh, I thought there was a flat on that. Is this the right one for this side? That's the fella. Not. Oh, actually, that has to come off because I forgot to put the spring on. Nut and spring washer. It's so long ago since I took all this apart. Would you believe it? You can't get a bloody socket in there. What is it? 11 sixteenths. Turning into one of those days. Alright, it's 11 sixteenths. 11 sixteenths. Couldn't get a socket in because it was catching on the sort of extension of the seat pillar.
Now as you remember we made that very carefully so that it didn't touch that casing and now it is. And of course to make it not touch the casing I'm going to have to heat this up to bend it out a little bit so it'll have to be repainted. Well anyway, that can all be done while we're waiting for that petal tank to come, can't it? Alright, let's put this on here. That goes on there. How the hell does that... Oh! That goes over the top of that. Is it? That goes on there. Yep, that's how it goes. That goes on there. What does that go on the outside? Now I'm completely baffled. No. Does that go on there? Good, I'm going to have to look at the video to see. Does that go on there like that? Alright, let me take a break while I think about this. Right, I haven't sorted out the break because I haven't thought about it. But what I did manage to do was in the press get just a little bit of a bend in this so that it now clears that. Also, for those of you who were unhappy about it, I made a little spacer look to go in there, right? So that goes in there like that, because you're worried the two halves of this casting would come up together. I've put the wrong bloody one on again. That's it. And that's got about an eighth of an inch or so now. All right. I just need to touch up a little bit of black paint there. So, still have to work out. Uh. All right, let me tighten this up. And then we'll see to that. Alright, it just goes round there and round there. And I've taken the thickness of the paint off on either side of this so that the pivot pin is now longer than the boss it's in. So that should tighten up properly. Plenty of grease on it won't uh, get any rust in it. So that goes on there like that. Come on. There we go. Still think it should be a lot more on there, but there's just enough space. You see that the frame tube is there, the one that used to have the pillion footrests on. Now that's three eighths. Looks like three eighths. <laughs> so it's probably three eighths BSC, and I think I. Some 3 8 BSC nuts. So let me just see. What I'm going to have to do is literally have one flush up against there. Let's have a look in our box of no, the 3 8 BSC one is empty. Damn. Alright, let's just tighten this up so we know what we're doing. 
I'm going to have to put another order in because I've run out of some quarter inch BSC nuts and things. So I was going to put another order in. The reason I'm pressing down here is to keep the spring from getting trapped. It's got to go around the boss and not get trapped in between it and the mount. Go. So that's got to go in there. And go in the other end of there. I don't think I've got any. See, I've just got a quarter inch. No, that's what I had to order. I don't even have a quarter inch BSF or BSC nut to to put on there to hold that in place. So let's leave that for now. Uh, I'll put some, what can you see, what can you see? Yep, I'll put some oil in there. And I've got the plug here ready to go in. So tomorrow morning we'll come out, we'll pop that on there and uh, we'll see about getting it started. And that'll be basically it. All right, so until tomorrow. Right, it's Tuesday. I've got 18 inches of snow and it's supposed to keep snowing until Wednesday. So, thought I'd do these. Uh, I know the video is getting long, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. So, there's one that's finished. Now, these are just over 800 foul wide. They don't have an awful lot of meat on them. So what I have been able to do is take it down to three quarters. I mean, I could have cleaned it up to some strange size, you know. Uh, three quarters is, what, three fours, 12 sixteenths. So I could have taken it to maybe 13 sixteenths. No, I wouldn't even have got that. Anyway, three quarters. Whoops. There we go. Right, and we still got plenty of meat. So I'll show you how I did them. I was, what I was worried about was how I was going to grip these to do the milling. And then I remembered that in amongst the stuff I got when I bought the lathe, I got some C5 collets. Uh, I forget what they call these. But you can see this one's being taken out and it's stepped. And it's just perfect for that. It doesn't even grip on the threaded part. So that's going to slide in there, that's going to grip, get gripped round the edge, and then, uh, is it a bit dark here? I don't know. There's enough room for the end mill to go past and catch these, so let me tighten this one up, put it in the mill, and I'll just show you how I'm going to do it. So this is the setup. I've got the collet in the hexagonal collet block. So I can turn it round and get six faces. The collet is actually up against the edge of the vise, so that sets it there. The table's locked. So what I'm going to do is, this is 805, it varies from side to side. But I'm starting at 805 and I want it to 750, so that's 30 thou. So I've touched off and I've gone down 15 thou. So I'll take 15 off each and then I'll check it with a socket and if need be just fine tune it to get it on. All right, so I'll just do one side and then I'll turn you off. Belts are getting a bit noisy. six done as I say check it with the socket and then I can do it from there 
Right, next little job I did. What have I done with it? Oh, is oh there it is. I made the piece for here. I actually made this one out of stainless steel. I had some stainless steel hex bar, so I thought, oh, I'll make one out of that. So there's that. The reason I did these couple of little jobs is because I staggered up here this morning through the snow. When I got here, I realised I hadn't put the memory card in the camera. So I wasn't going to walk straight back. I thought I'll... Uh... There we go. By the way, our new shoes. All right. Airbox. There's a star on with its black background. Okay. Right, I've had to fiddle on a little bit here because the carb was leaking. I think I might buy a new carb. But the big thing was, um, actually I'm going to show you something with the carb. When I checked it for spark, I didn't get one. So, hang on, here I am, look. I looked at the instructions because there's some troubleshooting. And it says, a spark isn't always visible when kicking the bike over and this is normal. Maybe no, but it isn't helpful when you're trying to check things. The CDI produces a high voltage, short duration spark. This intensifies as RPM increases as opposed to points which produce a low voltage, long duration spark. Uh, that's why I see things like Can-Ams uh, with a Rotax engine. If you bought a Can-Am with a Rotax engine, i.e. a motocrosser, it would have electronic ignition with a CDI. The people like SWM and what have you that used uh, not Canams, Rotax, the same two-stroke engine in their trials bikes, put points on them because you get a much better spark at lower revs. Now, fiddling around with that and with the carb, I will be honest with you, I have kicked this over a few times and stuff, so it should fire up straight away. And the ignition key works, I know. But all I did was get it to fire and then switch it off and start the camera. So let's see what we've got. Ooh. Sounds all right. I forgot. The switch works. All right. So it starts. It runs. I haven't quite dealt with the leak from the float chamber. So let me show you something there. We're getting to be another long video, but I want to show you this. Now, a common fault with the monoblocks is that they leak from the float chamber. And the reason is this cover has a really thick gasket and because it's only got three mounting points what tends to happen is people and of course we know the monoblocks and the concentrics were made to a price I mean BSA were doing the Walmart thing whereas instead of going to a supplier and saying how much is this item and then putting a the mark upon it they go to the supplier and say if you want to sell us stuff this is the price you have to charge so consequently Nice design of carburetor, but they made it out of really poor material, this zinc alloy stuff. So anyway, because of the poor material, with a thick gasket, when you tighten those three down, if you over tighten them, it squishes into the gasket, but of course there's a lot more support here, and it warps this. Now, if you watch a &G Engineering, Aid in one of his actually machines this to get it nice and flat again. But also, in Rupert Ratio's book, 
he shows you a tool which I made he says with alloy tube but anyway so what it is is two rings with three pieces out on each ring now this ring I've actually chamfered at 60 degrees which is roughly what the curve on the edge of this is so what happens is you put that like that you put that on there like that you put that on there offsetting these pieces and then he mentions doing it in a vise it's a lot easier if you've got to press because trying to hold it all together while you put it in the vise is difficult and then when you press that you straighten this out now it's not easy to do I'll admit having done it and I don't think I've quite got it right but what I think you've got to do is rather than just straightening it which is difficult to gauge is because these are so big a cut out you can actually bend the parts that are high down so that when you put that on then and tighten it down it'll all flatten so that's that now then what about these electrics right well I just checked the output excuse me from the generator through the, uh, the voltage thing regulator rectifier and that's fine 14 volts so I just checked it on the output from that power pack that's fine 14 volts so it must be in my wiring up here somewhere and as an aside that tap looks quite nice doesn't it makes me wish I hadn't ordered the because uh, it was like $250 for uh, the chrome one I could have got a used one from somewhere painted it black and white oh well never mind okay let me take this off and see what I've done wrong with these wires right well you remember how I mourned about this black backlight having just a black and a red okay I got the blacks mixed up I had connected the black that was the earth to the power in for the light because the power in for the light was the other black no way I could do it all right the other thing I found is I'll show you in a second somebody mentioned that with this system I shouldn't use a halogen I think it's a halogen bulb what do I know it's electricity you're right because even though it's bonking out plenty uh, of volts I guess the amperage is low because that is really dull and that makes the backlight dull but everything works so let me show you oh, I don't need to switch you on because you switched on uh, let's see I'll leave that switched on so the light comes on switch it on Michael I'm so used to competition bikes you know So that light bulb is screwing up everything. All right. It's done as much as it can be done. I'll change that light bulb, put the saddle back on, and as I say, that's as much as we can get done. So what we'll do is put it to one side. When the tank comes, put the tank on, and we'll look at it again, all right? So let's just do our little comments bit. All right, well, that's it for uh, this week. I've got a couple of, apart from the comments, there's a couple of things I want to mention, uh, and then we're going to uh, say that's it for the moment. So, what do I want to mention? All right, I've sent an email off to Electrex World to ask them about this. Um, they in particular asked about the wattage of the bulbs. They did think it was it seemed a little bad that I couldn't get the horn and the lights to work but actually what I've done is I took that halogen bulb out and I rummaged around found a proper Lucas reflector and an ordinary bulb 
and with that the lights are better front and back come on even just a tick over but the horn doesn't work a tick over but okay that's sort of academic because you know you don't really if you're a tick over you're standing still with just a few revs I get much better lights and the horn will work while the lights are on but I don't know about the backlight actually it was a just a bulb I pulled out the drawer so you never know the, the uh, brake light filament might not even work but what I've done is I've ordered some LCD bulbs front and rear they're expensive it's like $38 so what's that £26 something like that for a front one and about 10 for a back one <clears throat> and uh, but the thing is and I've written back to Electrics World it's just that the blurb you get with it is a little misleading because it basically said you can use a battery or you can use the power pack and they even said to me in their reply that well the power pack isn't you know you can't expect a lot from it well I think they should say that you know the power pack isn't a replacement for a battery now seeing as I you know made all those mountains and everything in the battery space I'm not going to start pulling all that out to put a battery in but the lights do work quite nicely and I'm assuming with uh, the LED bulbs they should be fine so you'll see that when we come back <clears throat> right what else oh, the other thing is footrests um, you saw me kicking it over in that and I don't know if you noticed but I didn't have the footrest on the right hand side and I found that with it on unless you've got very small feet I can't get my foot sort of on the kickstart and have it go under the footrest so what I'm going to do while we wait for the tank to come is I'm going to make that one and I'll film doing it into a folding footrest it rather um, spoils the intention of having the curved kickstart lever but I don't know I might fiddle on a bit more but I just can't get it I can't get my foot onto the kickstart so there's that so for what we're going to do oh as you know very kindly donated we've got nice tank badges new filler cap new uh, tap so I've got everything but the tank which is sort of at least another two weeks away so we'll have another video I've got the tank painted we'll put it on I'll show you that footrest and you'll be able to see the lights and everything by the way it's standing at the moment on its prop stand so I'm happy with the angle that's at all right so comments main one was about air getting into the air box that i built i suppose i should take the front off but anyway as a couple of people mentioned out you know it's open at the top and the air box didn't fill the hole that's in the inner cover plus there's a cutaway actually in the bottom of this cover so although the cover goes tight on the inner cover the outer one the air gets in through the back and just out of interest I did some measurements and um, because it's much easier working in whole numbers I did this sort of in millimeters so a 1 and 16th inch carb which this is oh I got a new carb by the way that arrived lashed out bought a brand new one they're bloody expensive on a blocks uh, what was I saying all right so the choke is 531 square millimeters so obviously four holes at one and a half inch they're actually 5,000 square millimeters so there's lots of air getting into the air box I measured up the gap around there it's, it was like two oblongs and a triangle shape at this side and that came to 4,500 square millimeters so there's near enough where are we oh yeah I mean there's 4,500, 500, that's nine times as much area of air coming in as there is needs to go through the carb. So don't worry about it. Lots of that. So that was that done. I was asked about the Henderson. Um, I'll mention that because I've been asked over a couple of weeks. I'm still waiting for the uh, half the crankcase where the bearings are getting rebabbited and the conrods with the rebabbited big ends I know they've done all the babbitting <clears throat> because they needed an extra piece to do the line boring and I had to send it off a piece that goes on the end of the crank so that's what I'm waiting for um, 
I've spoken to people who make pistons and actually they've made pistons for Henderson before so we're we're all set to go there when I get the barrels done. I've got valves and valve springs and all the rest of it so really what I'm waiting on is getting this crank back and the case with the babbling. Oh, and those people are also repairing the camshaft. You remember that was all the lobes but one were really badly pitted so they're repairing that so that's what that is. Opening music I've actually been asked this before. That was written and performed years ago by my son, Adam, who is a pianist, keyboard player, arranger and what have you. And um, when I first did the videos, I was trying to think of a piece of music to put on the, the beginning. And I had a CD from him from years ago and I remembered that little track. So I got that and put it on. Finally, is this for sale? Well, you may remember when I did the New Year video, I mentioned that because I'm sort of running out of space and I don't really like having collections of bikes everything we built from this onwards was going to be for sale so yes it will be for sale and I've had a couple of people obviously ask about it and I did have I can't remember your name sorry but I did make a note of it a chap right at the beginning got in touch with me and said when it's finished he'll be interested in buying it so I have just been adding up Remember this bike cost $100 to buy? The parts, I'm up to, well we've bought all the parts now. Basically three and a half thousand dollars. So, I'll be getting in touch with you about price. I'll be honest, I'm not, um, I'm not looking to make money on these. I sell these and it just finances the hobby and I film the hobby and you get the videos so end of story all right so that is everything for this week as I say I'll do one more video when the tank comes and we're all ready to finish it off and you can see all the other bits and pieces so next week we will start on the precursor if you like to the Triumph Otter and we'll do the frame building jeep that I'm going to build because there's a few interesting things I think you'll like about that. So until next week, I rambled on a bit there, um, stay safe and enjoy yourselves.